Hey there, my friends. I know that on Tuesday, all of you third through eighth grade teachers are going to be taking the reading test, I believe, and Wednesday is math. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time helping those of you whose students are going to get some revising questions. Now, just so you know, what's going to happen is if the extra six questions that your third through eighth graders get on the field test are revising, think of it as revising. In the instructions, it'll, it'll say, look for any revisions that need to be made. And revising comes from the word vision. And if you think about the way something looks right now and the way it's going to look later when you revise it, that it's the candy now and later. So what you're doing on revising is different than editing because you're improving the content in terms of how something is organized or developed. Whereas in editing, you're just working on conventions, the grammar, in terms of capitalization, usage, punctuation, spelling, run-ons, or fragments. So one of you messaged me. So I figured that there were lots of you out there that wanted to do a little review. So if you click the link of copy when you're in the YouTube version of this video, you can paste it to yourself as an email or text it to someone. That way you can watch it with your students and kind of review what revising is going to look like. So it'll be, if you get revising, it'll be two short passages at the most medium length. It won't look anything like the length of a re reading passage. I can promise you that because inside those two passages, there's only going to be three questions each. You can pretty much guarantee that if they get a revising, it'll be three questions each, each. And the cool thing about three is the word arm. Remember arm for both reading and revising. Let me show you by sharing my screen with you, my folder, and I'll also show you a couple of pages from the binder so that you guys who are really wanting to do some review with your kids tomorrow on the new part of the test, that's gonna be a field test and no, I don't believe in ignoring it just because it doesn't count. There's something wrong with a school and a philosophy that says, let's not practice this skill just because it doesn't count. So those of you who have the advanced writing folders for this year and this coming year can see that I've already prepared them to be for the short constructed responses that are worth one point in the 11 different areas, not including the regular multiple choice that is either going to be A, B, C, D, and F, G, H, J, alternating back and forth between even and odd, or it will just stay A, B, C, D, like it has in some online tests. So remember that editing is conventions and grammar using cups and they'll follow one of those three rules there. So if you don't have this, I would recommend that you pause the video right here and study that for a little bit so you can learn that the one mistake, they're going to get six questions of editing or six questions of revising where they will have to improve the content, which is the development or organization of something by adding green 
removing red and or replacing green or moving something around. It'll either be a word, some words, a phrase, a transition, or one sentence for revising. That's the most they are gonna, ever gonna ask your kids to fix the content of is one sentence. Now, what does that mean? That in the introduction, the body or the conclusion, you're going to put something in, take something out, or move the order or the organization of something around. Another way to do ARM, if it happens to be a story that your kids are revising, is for them to remember the acronym Actors Remember More. You could add the S and say story sequence, or artists remember more pictures, remember more setting or senses, but that's the main thing that I want you to think about is when you're doing revising, they don't use the word substitute. They use what could best replace. So what I'm going to do for anybody who wants a copy, I'll go ahead and send, this is page 231 and 232 of the binder for anybody who wants a free copy. I'll send this tonight, which is Sunday or tomorrow, Monday. Revising, improving the IBC, the introduction, body, conclusion, the content, development, organization by adding, removing, replace, removing one word, phrase, transition, or sentence. One more time on stories or personal narratives or fiction or literary nonfiction, actors remember more story sequence, sentences that paint pictures, artists remember more setting or senses where you're taking something out, putting something in, moving something up, down, over, or around in the introduction, the body, or the conclusion. Each question will only ask you to do one of those things. And so when I flip this over so you can page, see page 232, the only kinds of questions that have ever been asked are on page 232 of the binder in terms of fixing content. This has been ever since STAR has started that your kids could be asked one of these questions in third through 10th grade. So let me go ahead and just go through these as quickly as possible so you can see them. But remember to email me at writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com and I will send you a copy of this so that you can practice with your kids tomorrow. I'll practice, send it for free to kind of prepare you because starting next year, the field test items are part of the test. And then you'll also have to take the one point constructed type questions, the uh, two point short answer questions. And for reading teachers, uh, those one and two points are in all subjects and for reading teachers only, ELAR teachers and Spanish language arts teachers, you're gonna to have to take the 10 point question where two different people are gonna read it and give up to five points each, uh, up to three points for the development and organization of the response. Did you answer the question? Did you use textual support evidence? And did you develop your response? And then the other two points are gonna be on conventions how strong is the grammar in your response? So that's going to be a combination of organization development and conventions, but this is solely based on organization and development. What sentence could be added, singular sentence, to clearly say the central idea, the controlling idea, the thesis or the position? That means something that you could add that everything is about. Number two, what sentence could be added to clearly say the topic or the focus of the paper. Again, the focus is the big idea, sort of like a summary in reading. Which sentence could be at the strength in the introduction, make it a more effective claim at the end of the introduction. So basically it's sort of like a hook, an attention getter that somebody might write uh, to add something besides just a central idea or a focus of a story. Transitioning, 
what transition word could best be added at the beginning of sentence blank or replace the word blank in a sentence? Which sentence could best follow sentence blank and improve the transition to the next paragraph? So it'd be like a necklace sentence going from your head to your body, a belt that goes from your, a sentence that goes from your shirt to your pants, uh, a scarf that goes from your neck to your jacket, or your socks that are the sentence that would go from your uh, last body paragraph to your conclusion. Which uh, transition word or phrase could best be added to the beginning of the last sentence to help conclude the paper? So that would be like, you wanna add one more sentence to be like the laces on shoes that tie everything together. Which word or phrase, which could add stronger, more more precise word could replace blank and help improve the meaning clarity of sentence blank. So again, they're not saying substitute, they're removing one and replacing it with something else. Which revision in sentence blank should could be made to maintain the consistent point of view? In other words, if the point of view is from the, the person the, the who's telling the story, then it would have to stay in that person's point of view. If it's also first person, second person, or third person, you'd have to change that. Or sometimes there's repetition, and so you need to do revision so that you're not having the same words and phrases in consecutive sentences because that's bad organization. When you have 10 sentences and five of them say the same thing, then you only have five good sentences. So what's gonna happen, they'll have five sentences possibly, and one of them will be repetitious and you'll remove that one and replace it with one that doesn't repeat or improves the meaning. But revision, all right, so let's go, let's talk about uh, sentences that go together in this portion. Sentence blank lets clarity. What is the most effective change? What they're saying is, how can I take this sentence that's too vague, remove it and replacing it with something that's more specific? Which sentence could best open paragraph blank or replace sentence blank as a topic sentence? So if I hold my hand up like this in reading, I say that the thumb is like the topic sentence it's like the main idea of a paragraph so what they're saying is let's get rid of that first sentence remove it and replace it with a better topic sentence a better main idea which means your kids are going to have to know what all the other specific supporting sentences are and closing sentence of the paragraph is so that they could add a good topic sentence next one where is the best place to insert the sentence in the box into this uh, in, or this sentence that's just written out, not in a box, but could be just written out in paragraph, let's say it's paragraph seven. So if this is paragraph seven, well, you have four choices. Do you wanna put it in position A ap after, because in revising and editing, they have sentence numbers after sentence 14, after 15, after 16, after 17, or after 18. And so they're basically saying, we're gonna move the box sentence or the sentence that's on the line in the question being asked about and put it in the right place and basically deciding who's on first uh, around the words in 80 ways. Which of the following sentence, sentences quotes could best follow and replace sentence a blank and strengthen the closing of this paragraph or the paper. So again, we want they want to know uh, how to wrap up a paragraph. So basically a pinky. So I can either draw a conclusion to an entire passage or I can uh, tie the laces on my shoes to bring the whole passage to a close or I can just close the paragraph. What's my pinky? Uh, sentence that is going to be a detail or a smarty, a sentence that could bring that paragraph to a close. Which of these could best follow and support the idea in sentence blank? So if you have a bunch of sentences, if this is sentence 17 and they say which one could best follow 17, they 
would want one to go between 17 and 18 to support sentence 17. That's how that's gonna work, okay? Uh, and as you can see there, um, it's gonna help support the main idea of the paragraph or it, it could just support um, one sentence in a paragraph that I call it GPS. Take some a sentence that's vague and make it make it more specific by adding some details that add some substance and some clarity to that sentence. Um, one of uh, which which of these could should be deleted or has unnecessary or extraneous information in paragraph blank. In other words, like this, as you see there in the song, one of these things just doesn't belong here. So if you have five or six sentences, either one of them is repetitious, one of them doesn't really have anything to do with the content or meaning of this paragraph, or it's possible that because something has already been written in a, in, a, in a sentence in a paragraph, it doesn't need to be written again in a different place. You, you can just remove it because it's information that's already been written. You don't need it again. Our last two, uh, what is the best way to combine sentences blank and blank? So it'll be two consecutive sentences Let's say we have sentence 14 and we have sentence 15. You have to combine them without repeating, without changing the meaning, without changing the content, while con continuing to have a complete subject and a complete predicate that doesn't turn the sentence into a fragment. And it doesn't matter if it's a, a compound or a complex sentence but normally that's what they're testing is joining two sentences together to make them make more sense. And I call that come together right now. And this last one does pretty poorly for some reason, but all it's asking for is what is the best revision or the most effective revision in sentence blank. So if the sentence has 10 words, they're saying that 10 words are fine, but revision means just change the order of the words, playing around the words in 80 ways so that they're in an order that makes sense. And so one, of six of those kind of questions are going to be asked and more likely, more than likely to about half your class, I would imagine maybe at least a third to a half of your class, if I'm guessing, might get an editing passage, another third to one half might get a revising one. And possibly if there's a third, then a third would get an extra reading passage. And some of them unfortunately are gonna get an extra paired passage, which I'm hoping would be very short because there's gonna be six questions. And so if I'm guessing, they're probably going to either add to already existing passages and ask more questions about them so that there's just more words inside uh, the passages that already exist. Because to me, it seems like it would be really hard for your kids to have to absorb the content in terms of the development and organization of two more complete passages where you have to have two questions about one passage and two more questions about the other passage and two more questions about how they compare or how they contrast with each other. So if you message me, uh, I, I, I can't really help you, but if you email me at writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com, let me get really close with my folder so that you can see, uh, hopefully that uh, it's not very clear. Let me put it back on the screen for a second so that you can see that. And you can write down my e email address. Um, it's right there on, under the word writing. If you email me at the word writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com, I'll send you a copy of this 
um, revising content section so that you and your students can review at least for a little bit what kind of keyword strands that you're you'll they'll be seeing on those three questions or two different passages where you're adding removing replacing or moving one word one phrase a transition or a sentence or the order around so hopefully that has helped you um, go ahead and share this video with any of your teachers who are planning on reviewing revising tomorrow i look forward to working with many of you next year if you teach reading you are going to have to learn editing and revising as part of your uh, test because what's going to happen is when they're asking your kids those questions they're going to be have to be writing in complete sentences that have subjects and predicates that start with a capital that have ending punctuation that are somewhat decently spelled correctly uh, in terms of the word cups capitalization usage punctuation spelling and the other s was to make sure that their sentences that they write are not problems with sentence boundaries with run-ons or fragments so i look forward exciting excitedly to helping all of you reading teachers from third through 10th grade prepare for the new test all of you social studies science and math teachers to kind of prepare for the constructed type responses uh, that are worth one point and your short answer two point questions to kind of to kind of do that uh, i look forward to meeting with you email me for my training flyer for the, all of you that ask me for the revising pages that i showed you from the binder i'll go ahead and send you my flyer for trainings for next year so that you can begin either the summer or the fall uh, to kind of get your students and your teachers ready. Thank you guys and take care.